favorite save was actually our very first page. Yeah, it was quite remarkable. A really good save that I'm just so pleased about. My most interesting uh, save that occurred started with a call from the uh, paramedics when the patient had refused to come in and finally convinced them to come into the emergency department. So one of my most memorable saves was a young man who came to the hospital because he said he'd been feeling a bit nauseated. My favorite save was actually our very first patient. We got a call about a young dental student that had collapsed. It was a 34-year-old woman. She was in fairly good health and she had an undiagnosed cardiac condition. So I got a call at 2 a.m. frantic from my cousin and her husband, Mike, had suffered a cardiac arrest at a dance. And he had been down a long time. And it just took a period of time for the paramedics to reach him and then for him to be defibrillated. So when he came into the emergency department, he was pretty out comatose. Needless to say, they were frantic, and very luckily for him, he had gotten good CPR at the scene. However, everyone was terribly worried that he would never wake up again, and the doctors warned my cousin. My cousins contacted me at 2 in the morning, and so a uh, minute I was in a groggy state, and I'm talking to the emergency doctor who said, well, we've never... We've never cooled anybody at our hospital. Do you have any thoughts? We've never cooled. It was quite a dramatic scene. 30 to 40 minutes. 20 minutes to get his heart restarted. We rushed in as the cooling team. And started cooling their initiated cooling. Initiated cooling. Initiated cooling. Initiated cooling. Hypothermia, hypothermia. We've never cooled anybody at our hospital. We've never cooled anybody at our hospital. Do you have any thoughts? Dr. Newmar, one of the things like if this was happening to me or anybody else, you got to be worried about the brain. What's going to happen to the brain? So, so what happens with cardiac arrest is the brain is injured by the period of time when the heart has stopped and then it actually has the capacity to recover uh, when the heart is restarted. However, an injury process is triggered that evolves over hours to days uh, after the resuscitation. And it's during that time that we think there's a therapeutic window where we can intervene with treatments like hypothermia to stop that injury process and prevent the neurons from dying, which will allow people to wake up and return to the normal function. Dr. Goyal, Dr. Merchant, what kinds of things in terms of cooling, taking care of uh, other parts of the systems, what are we worried about then after we get their heart restarted? Once we have the heart restarted and we know that the patient is a uh, candidate for cooling, we start the cooling process right away. We start first with cold saline. We have two liters of cold, cold saline kept in the emergency department at all times. We start that actively and then start the surface cooling device. It's essentially like putting cold saline directly on the patient's body, except it's separated by a thin membrane that keeps the patient from actually getting wet, uh, much cleaner than just putting the patient in an ice bath, say, uh, uh, or dousing the patient with water and uh, putting the fan over them, which are things that we used to do. So we, we use uh, the device to wrap both patient's legs and patient's chest, uh, which still keeps their head, their upper chest, and their pelvis uh, accessible to do other uh, things as necessary as part of their management. So we'll just wrap one of Dr. Abella's legs just to demonstrate. And Ben, if you can pick up your leg, please. We'll generally have this placed prior to the patient arrival, or we'll roll the patient onto this device. over and over and again the patient would have no clothes on so we'd have a very high surface contact area. You see fluid coming uh, circulating in and out through these pipes that's taking essentially four degree cold saline into the patient and bringing it back to the machine. Uh, Dr. Merchant, they feel this? Is it uncomfortable? No, so the patients that we typically start in hypothermia are comatose prior to uh, beginning the hypothermia. So right now in the United States and a little bit around the world, uh, is the average patient going to get cooled? What's the deal? So cooling is sort of in the beginning stages right now, and so not all hospitals have 
adopted this uh, new therapy. Um, a lot more patients are receiving cooling in Europe and in other countries abroad. And so we're just sort of trying to get physicians more aware of this new technology so they can start uh, cooling their patients so they can have better outcomes and leave the hospital and return to their communities as they were when they came in. He said, thanks very much. You know, I'm going to get Mike cooled down. Uh, he's looking hemodynamically stable, but uh, he doesn't have any neurologic function. By all accounts, at this point, uh, he appears to be brain dead. Five hours later, I called his ICU nurse. So I talked with her and told her sort of our experience, spent about 45 minutes on the phone. Here's what you do. Try a little of this, try a little of that. Get the temperature down to 34 degrees. She called me back a little bit later. That was very helpful. Thank you very much. Then they slowly warmed him up just the way uh, you should after about 24 hours. And lo and behold, about a day after that, he woke up. I said, you know, how he, is he doing? And my cousin said, would you like to talk to him? And I said, oh, well, my God, can he talk? You know, I mean, can he talk? A minute later, she put him on the phone. And he said, Lance, it's great to be able to talk to you. And I said, Mike, you have no idea how wonderful it is to hear your voice. When I went back to see her three days later. 48 hours later. Three days later. I wasn't sure what I was going to find. Sitting up in bed. She was at home cooking dinner for her kids. The breathing tube was out. Uh, he said, actually, you know, doctor, I have to leave the hospital. She asked me for a Diet Coke. And he said, I will sign your paperwork. I'm leaving. It was then that I knew that we really had saved her.